In this lesson, we're going to walk through two terms that can be a little bit confusing if you've never heard them before. And they are generative and discriminative algorithms. And so these are two different types of algorithms that pretty much every algorithm that you're going to work with will fit in in some way or another. So let's look at generative models first. And what these type of algorithms do is they model the distribution of individual classes. So imagine that you're building a handwriting recognition system. And so the way that a generative model would work is it would go and it would create a model for every single letter in the alphabet, for every number, and then it would store that model. And then every single time it received a new input. So it wanted to see what the handwriting represented. It would then go and cross-reference it against its historical model set. And so that is at a very high level the way a generative model would work. Now, a discriminative model, and this is what typically you're going to be implementing unless you're getting into neural networks and those kinds of things. A discriminative model learns the hard or soft boundaries between classes. And so, uh, whereas the generative model builds a entire model for every class in the system, a discriminative model simply tries to find the key differences between each element. And so some case studies on this, a neural network is a very popular use case for generative models. And if you remember back to when we walked through the example on how we could use a neural network to build out a tool for a baseball organization, that, was, that allowed us to create all of these kinds of models such as pitch types, pitch locations, field dimensions, all of these kinds of elements. And so the way that that generative system would work is it would take in all the historical data and then it would build its classes from there. Just like in the earlier example where I talked about the handwriting recognition tool. And then from there, any new elements that we needed to generate a prediction from would then go and it would run through all of those predefined and pre-generated classes. And that's really the genesis of the name generative comes from the fact that the system is generating those classes. It's storing them and then it's able to use those to make predictions. Now, when we look at an example of a discriminative algorithm, one of the best examples of this is a support vector machine. Remember, if you go back to the definition, a discriminative algorithm looks for the boundaries between data points. And so instead of going and creating this entire model for every class in the system, instead what it does is it goes and it simply tries to find the boundary. So in the case, and we can use the same exact use case. So we can come and right here have an example of a system that performs handwriting recognition. Instead of creating a model for what a one looks like and what a nine looks like, instead what a support vector machine does is it simply tries to find the best boundaries that separate a one from a nine. And so that's exactly what, that's how it determines success. So it will classify by seeing all of these ones, all of these nines, finding the key differences, and then that is how it sets in the support vector case machine. It sets its hyperplane, it sets its differentiation point right there. And coming back to the handwriting example, if we get a new number that it's trying to recognize, it is not going to look at all of the nines and then all of the ones. It's simply going to look at the components inside of that new element, and it's going to look at the boundary that it set up, and then depending on the components inside of the new element, it's going to say, okay, it looks like, based on 
you know, where the pixels are located on the image. It appears that you are a one or a nine, but it's all based on where it falls on relation to the graph and where it falls in relation to these boundaries that have been set up. And so those are the key differences between discriminative algorithms and generative ones.